So I'm here today with beautiful Daisy, who has the most incredible eyes. I'm so excited to do makeup on them. Starting off now just by cleansing the skin, I am using the Elemis Dynamic Resurfacing Facial Pads. These are such a handy thing, um, just to kind of have around so you don't have to soak a cotton pad, but actually, so you can kind of give a very light exfoliation and cleanse at the same time. So on the skin now, I'm gonna use this moisturizer and primer combination. Um, it is a Victoria Beckham one, but it was made by Augustine Espada and actually if you've ever tried that skincare, it's really beautiful. So I think this is a really nice colour of just beautiful kind of skincare, but also something you can use directly under your face. Because Daisy has such pretty skin, I don't want to overload it with anything too heavy, so I'm using the Laura Mercier Illuminating Tinted Moisturiser. And this just really helps to keep the beautiful glow in the skin a little kind of slight tint of coverage too. Um, it really is my go-to when I want to do super beautiful glowy looks. And look how beautiful and glowy that makes the skin. So gorgeous. Using this brush now which is a Clinique one and I'm just kind of going back over the top um, to really buff that product into the skin because when you're using anything with a little bit of pearl running through it, buffing it into the skin just really helps that glow to show even more. Now I am going to use this, I've just got this product, it's the Banana Low Lighter from Rodeal, but actually it's such a great kind of brightening concealer. So I'm going to put a few kind of blobs in all the places that I want to really brighten and add a little bit of coverage to. So that's this inner part of the nose here and under the eyes here, kind of everywhere that you see a groove really. So more than just concealing under the eyes, because Daisy doesn't really have any darkness, I just want to make sure that the skin, um, the surface of the skin looks really kind of even and smooth. So same really tiny little brush and I'm just going to set that now with a little bit of Rodeo Banana Powder. And I just really want this powder just to be in the centre of the face just so that the makeup doesn't move around or crease. But I'm still going to keep all the kind of outside of the face really kind of fresh and glowy and not powder until later on. So for blush, I'm kind of a little bit in love with this natural rosiness that Daisy has on her skin. So I'm using the Ilia Color Haze Pigment in the shade Temptation, which is this beautiful kind of pinky peach. And I'm just gonna press this into the apples of the cheeks, and actually even just slightly lower than I would normally because I want this to look like that kind of flush that you get when you're kind of taking a walk in the cold. And it just looks really kind of youthful and healthy on the skin. I'm just going to leave skin as is for a moment and move on to eyes. I'm using the NARS Smudge Proof Shadow Primer Base in the shade Medium, which is pretty much the same colour as Daisy's Natural Lids, so I'm just putting this all over the eyes, and this is just to make sure that the eyeshadow colour that we use comes out really beautifully intense and doesn't crease. So what I want to do now is just pack some colour onto the lids. This is a really beautiful matte lilac shade by Natasha Denona. And I'm just kind of putting this all over the lids. The reason why I'm almost pressing it on is because you get more intensity of colour when you're using a matte shade when you press onto the skin. Now that that colour's on the lid, I'm just taking kind of a soft fluffy brush and I'm going to blend out the edges of that. So just really kind of light touches. And I'm taking that colour kind of quite far out in this section here too. So now I've blended that top part of the eye, I'm taking a little bit of a slightly cooler shade, so this has got a little bit more blue in it, this shade, and I'm just going to press this under the lid. Take this shadow quite low because I want this to be a kind of very kind of diffused and softly blended look. Just a little tip when you're doing your eyeshadow after you've done your foundation and concealer, is instead of cleaning under the eyes with um, like a cotton bud or cotton wool, you can actually just use a little bit of concealer and a clean brush and that helps to just refresh under the eye area and make sure there's no kind of like microscopic bits of uh, eyeshadow that have dropped and are going to make the under eye look dull. I just want to add a little bit of depth and shape to this eye look now. So I'm taking a black shadow and just with this little brush, I'm just going to press this just along the lash line in the outer part of the eye. And a little bit also just kind of like in a half triangle shape in the socket. And then just again use that soft fluffy brush just to blend out and a little tip when you're doing this is to just do it really gradually so just add little bits of shadow and then blend rather than put too much on at one time until you get the kind of depth and definition that you're looking for 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking some of that slightly cooler mauve shade and I'm going over the top of the black and that's going to give us kind of this slight graduation of colour where it starts off a little bit more pink and then goes to a bit more of a grey blue sort of lilac and just really softly blending that out to create this elongated shape. So I'm just going to line the eyes now and I'm using Deli Delilah <laughs> Gel Liner. Um, so if you just look down for me, always prefer to do liner on eyes that are open and looking down because you get a smoother surface. Uh, the ability to speak. So I'm just keeping that liner really really close to the lash line in the inner part of the eye and going slightly thicker in the outer part of the eye. So a little tip for creating the right shaped liner for your eyes is if you've got these beautiful kind of almond shaped eyes then you can line all the way along the lash line whereas if you have rounder eyes then you might want to keep your liner just from halfway. So I'm going to do some lashes now Obviously, as you can see, Daisy's lashes are insane, but we're just gonna add some of the longer length, my individuals from the center here. So a little, another tip on how to take these out of the box without breaking them, because they're so fragile, is just take them right from the base rather than the tip. And then I always like to pop them on with eyes open. I personally do them um, before mascara because I find that way you can apply the mascara afterwards and then you get a very natural blended look with the false lashes and natural lashes. So what I've done is I've just applied the longer length on the outer part of the eye and now on this inner part of the eye, I'm just putting a few of the medium length. You can just apply them to the outer corners, but I find if you do shorter ones in the inner corner, then once that mascara is on, then you literally can't see where the false ones start and stop, so it looks even more natural. So I'm going to pop some mascara on top of that now. This is the Spectrum um, Dark Matte Mascara, which is really kind of lengthening without adding too many fibres to the lashes. Also stays really well and doesn't transfer under the eyes. And as Daisy has such long lashes, I'm sure that any mascara that would transfer would literally be on her cheek. <laughs> so we're going to prevent that happening with this. Just as the very finishing touches to these eyes, just using a little pencil brush and a touch of just an iridescent blue shadow just to add this little pop of blue into the inner part of the eye there. So before I do brows I want to add a really beautiful pop of blush and I'm going to start kind of under the cheekbones here and just gradually blend my way right up to the kind of outer part of the eyes to create this beautiful draped blush effect and this is a Sunny's Face blush in the shade Disco which is quite kind of ready pink as you can see, but I really want that kind of intensity of color um, just to give us this beautiful kind of defined pinkiness here, which is gonna to help to hold them in place. So I'm gonna move on to brows now. Daisy has amazing brows. It's gonna be so satisfying to comb these through. I've put a little bit of fixing spray in my soap brows tin, and I'm just combing that soap through the brows. So I'm just going to fill in any little gaps now and I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow in the shade Taupe, um, which is not quite as dark as Daisy's natural brows, but because she's blonde I don't want to go too dark and make the brows too um, kind of dominant, so I want to just slightly lighten the overall effect. So swapping brushes now because I'm using a powder product and I'm just using this really pretty pink shade from the Dior Highlighting Palette. And I'm just going to sweep that and that's just going to give us that kind of glowy look at the top of cheekbones on top of that pink. Okay, so now that brows are done, I'm just going to repowder slightly with the same rhodial banana powder. But now that I can kind of see how the skin settles, I always like to give it a minute just to see whether the skin's going to absorb that product and then not need powdering or whether it's going to need a little bit of extra powder. So I'm just really keeping this to the middle of the face, sort of chin the inner part near the nose hair and forehead, just in places that we don't want to be too glowy. So the lip liner I've gone for is a Melt Cosmetics liner in the shade Foxy. I love this liner. It's, it's um, kind of a pale, nudie brown, but I just think it works well for so many skin tones. So Daisy has this really pretty natural rosiness to her lips, but for this look, I kind of want to tone that down and go with a more beige, muted nude. I'm using a Natasha Denona lipstick in the shade Charlotte and it's got a lot of kind of brown running through it this nude. So I'm putting the lipstick on first and then I'm going to go with a liner afterwards depending
depending on what I think will work best with her skin tone and also this lipstick colour. So makeup is done now and we're going to do some hair and then I will show you the finished look afterwards. Here is our finished look. Rio has just done a little kind of modern twist on a bun with a little bit of detail at the back and this parting here which I love. Thank you.